Today we celebrate the transfiguration of Jesus. Here is something for you to think about. Did you know that the Greek word translated as transfiguration is the word metamorphothē from which we get the word metamorphosis. I bet I could invite one of our children up here and he or she could tell us about metamorphosis. A dictionary defines metamorphosis as a transformation, a complete change of appearance and form. The best example we have of metamorphosis is the transformation of a lowly caterpillar into a beautiful butterfly. That process has thrilled people throughout the ages. Butterflies are beautiful and fascinating. Many butterflies such as the monarch are migratory and capable of long distance flights. They migrate during the day and use the sun to orient themselves. Because of their striking beauty, butterflies are often seen in the works of art. Because of the mysterious process by which they change from ugly caterpillars to beautiful butterflies, they are often seen as symbol of new life. In ancient times, a butterfly was seen in Japan as the personification of a person's soul, whether they be living, dying or already dead. But the butterfly can have many meanings. One Japanese superstition says that if a butterfly enters your guest room and perches there, the person whom you most love is coming to see you. In Chinese culture, two butterflies flying together symbolize love. Some people say that when a butterfly lands on you, it means good luck. Maybe some of us need to plant butterfly gardens. I think it is interesting that the term indicating the transfiguration of Jesus should be so close to the term describing the metamorphosis of a butterfly. This can help us to appreciate how dramatic the change in Jesus' appearance was on the mountain when he was with his closest disciples Peter, James and John. I'm not saying that Christ's transfiguration was anything like the metamorphosis of the butterfly. He certainly did not sprout wings and fly off the mountain like Superman. But something happened that day, something his disciples would never forget. You know the story. One day Jesus took Peter, James and John and led them up a high mountain. Suddenly and quite dramatically on that mountain Jesus was transfigured right in front of them. Suddenly his clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. In Luke's gospel, the word used to describe Jesus' dazzling appearance is the same word that is used to describe lightning. It is an amazing scene. If we can visualize it in our minds, we will experience a sense of awe. It reminds me of a similar scene in the Old Testament in Exodus chapter 34. Do you remember that day when God gave Moses the 10 commandments? Moses came down the mountains having been in the presence of God. Quite mysteriously, his face shone so much reflecting the glory of God that he had to wear a veil. His face was so radiant the people were afraid to come near him. That's interesting, don't you think? In the same way when Peter, James and John were on the mountain with Jesus, his clothes became dazzling white. But that's not all. Not only did the disciples see Jesus transfigured, they also saw two of the Old Testament premier figures, Elijah and Moses with him. Elijah and Moses were talking with Jesus. This was more than the disciples could process. Peter said to Jesus, "Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah." Mark tells us, Peter did not know what to say. They were so frightened. That is so Simon Peter. He never missed an opportunity to open his mouth and plant his foot in it. Maybe if this happened today, Peter would have asked Jesus if he could post pictures of this event on Facebook or Instagram. 
I can hear him saying, Master, is it all right if I take a selfie? Peter had no clue what he was saying. That's all right. This was an event beyond his understanding. And then, as if things had not gotten mysterious enough, a cloud appeared and covered them. And a voice came from the cloud. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. I don't know about you, but if I heard a voice coming out of the cloud, I would be ready to run. But the three disciples were probably already in a state of shock. Jesus transfigured, Moses and Elijah there in their presence. Now this voice from the cloud, it was more than they could possibly take in. Then suddenly Mark tells us, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. That's significant. Moses and Elijah represent the law and the prophets. After God announces that Jesus is his son, Moses and Elijah disappear and Jesus alone remains. The law and the prophets have served their time and pass away. But Jesus, who is the fulfillment of both the law and the prophet, remains. What happened on the mountain was a visual representation of what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. The law and the prophets had served their purpose, but the time of the Messiah is at hand. The voice that came from the cloud was for us as much as it was for Peter, James and John. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Listen to him first of all when he says what is critical in life. What is critical for living the Christ life? You already know love for God and love for our neighbor. Everything else in life is of secondary importance to those two commands. We love our neighbor because we love God. Love God, love your neighbor. Listen to Jesus when he says that this is what is critical in life. On the last day, this is how you will be judged. Not on the basis of how much you have accumulated. Not on the basis of how many marathons you have run. Not on the basis of how many degrees you have earned. These things will be as dirty rags. The only question you and I will be asked is how well we have loved. Also, listen to him when he explains who our neighbor is. Not just the people in our family, not just the people in our neighborhood, not just the people who look like us or think like us. Everyone is our neighbor. Jesus showed us who his neighbors were. Whose place does Jesus the Messiah take? He takes the place of people like the cowardly disciples the scheming religious leaders and spineless politicians. He takes the place of people like the blood-stained Barabbas and the cursing criminal. People are the reason that Jesus had to drink the cup of God's wrath. We are the reason that Jesus is dying. But not just us. It is clear from his teachings that he died for the whole world. Everyone is our neighbor. Even our enemies are our neighbors. No one is shut out. Listen to him. Listen to him as he tells us what is critical in life. Love for God and neighbor. Listen to him as he defines who our neighbor is. And finally, listen to his promise to us. Whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. This is to say that Jesus' transfiguration prefigures what we shall someday be if we give our lives to him. We will be transformed from lowly caterpillars to beautiful butterflies. As someone has said, nature forms us, sin deforms us, the penitentiary reforms us, education informs us, the world conforms us, but Only Jesus transforms us. Have you got a message that you can be transformed? Listen to him. Whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. 
he is talking about you and me listen to him whoever you are whatever you've done transformation is possible listen to him quit living like a caterpillar allow him to turn you into a beautiful butterfly we are not called to remain in the state that god found us but to feed on his word and grow let him transform you today may jesus christ be praised